So in this video, I want to show you some tricks um, that you can use when serializing, deserializing JSON using the system.text.json library included in .NET. So say you have a list of countries like this. I have a country record over here, which has an ISO code property and a name property. And I've just created a list with a few countries. Let's say you want to serialize this to a JSON object. Now what you could do is you could say, well, countries JSON equals JSON serializer dot serialize. And you can just pass in your country's object that you want to serialize. Let's see what we get when we serialize like this. All right, so you'll see it's serialized the list of objects. It's a JSON array and inside each inside the array, each object has the ISO code and the name property and they are outputted exactly as they were specified. So in this case, Pascal casing. Now let's say, for example, oftentimes when you're working with REST APIs, you actually use camel casing, which is where the first word is all lowercase and then you leave the rest of the variable name um, with the first letter starting in uppercase. So if we wanted to do that, we could go and pass in JSON serializer options. So we'd go new JSON serializer options, and we could go and set property naming policy equal to JSON naming policy dot camel case. So if we did that and we ran that again, let's see what we get. All right, so you'll see it's outputted the list of objects again, but at this time you'll see that our properties start with lowercase letters. All right, now, we can specify the property naming policy property like this. However, because outputting camel case property names is so common, the .NET team was quite clever and they've included a JSON serializer defaults. Now, the way the defaults work, if you use the general default, it's the same as not specifying anything. So it's exactly the same as just passing in a new JSON serializer options um, object like that, which is just the default. It will output as Pascal names, um, property names are case sensitive, etc. However, we can go and change the default behavior by saying JSON serializer defaults.web. Now this will do exactly what the property naming case property did for us. If we run this again, you'll see it's going to output with lowercase letters. All right, and there you see the first um, letter of every property name is lowercase. We have camel case um, naming convention over here. All right, so that's great. Um, but what if we wanted to also specify other properties? besides just using the default web ones, we can. We can just go and pass in and set additional properties like this. So say for example, we wanted to indent the output of JSON, we could set right indented to true. So now it's going to apply the web defaults and then indent the output. And you'll see after running that is indeed the case. It's indented the JSON nicely and it's using Pascal naming. All right, so that's serializing an object to JSON. But what about when we want to deserialize that? All right, so we've already got serialized JSON here. So we're just going to deserialize this country's JSON back into a list of countries. Let's go and create a new variable called deserialized countries. And we're going to use the JSON serializer again, but in this time we're going to call deserialize. And we're going to pass in the type that we're expecting from that JSON. So this is a list of countries. Inside the parameters, we simply pass in our country's JSON. And what I want to show you now is what happens if we don't specify any JSON serialization options. Um, remember, we are serializing our JSON, or we're serializing our object to JSON using the web default. So it's using uh, camel cased naming and it's indenting it. Let's see what happens if we try and just deserialize that with the default serializer. So let's go and output a list of those countries that we got. Deserialized and uh, deserialized countries and we are just going to output the country code and name like that. Let's see what we get. All right, so you'll see we got three items, but the name and the, the code are blank. And so when I printed it, yeah, just printed blank lines like that with the dash. So what's happening is when we serialize it, we're using uh, camel casing, but when we're deserializing it, we're not telling our serializer to uh, take into account the fact that the property names are camel cased. And so it's expecting the, this Pascal, um, names that we have here in our class. So how do we fix this? Well, we can use the JSON serializer options again. So let's go and use JSON serializer options. Now we can go and use the JSON serializer defaults.web and that will do exactly what we're expecting. So if we go and run this now, you'll see it's now it's able to pass the JSON and we're getting a list of the countries, names and codes. Now one thing I want to show you about when you use the web default is this. Let's say that I 
serialized my JSON and it was Pascal naming case. So I've taken out that web default. So it's going to, instead of converting property names to camel case, it's going to specify them as Pascal case. Now let's see if it deserializes that correctly. And we see that it did deserialize it correctly. But now how's that possible? If we've, our JSON was Pascal naming and uh, how did it deserialize that? Well, it's because this default, this web defaults, not only names your properties using camel case, but it also expects property names to be case insensitive. So this means that regardless of the what sense, like case sensitivity or property names are using, it's going to ignore that when it's deserializing. So the web defaults for the JSON serializer are quite useful when you're receiving JSON from, for example, a client, say you have a REST API and you wanna deserialize a, a JSON object that was sent to you, you can use the web defaults because it's quite forgiving. Whereas you can use the default options as well or JSON serializer defaults.general if you want to have more control over it and you want it to be Pascal naming, you don't want the property names to be case sensitive, etc. Um, I just want to show you, you can also set property name case sensitivity manually um, over here by saying property naming, property name case insensitive. You can set that to true. And this is going to essentially do the same thing when deserializing the JSON. So if I ran this, you'll see this is essentially what that web defaults um, JSON serialization options are doing when it deserializes JSON. You'll see here it's deserialized it successfully. All right, so that's all for this video on the system.text.json library and using it to serialize and deserialize JSON. You saw how we can customize what that JSON should look like when it's serialized using JSON serializer options. And then we saw how we can change the kind of JSON we're expecting um, by using that same JSON serializer options on the deserialize method. We also saw how you can use defaults to create consistent rules around serializing and deserializing JSON across your application. That's all for this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.